Hi, in the previous video we took a look at this uh, Casio FX260 Solar 2 calculator, did a review and tear down of that, I'll link that in if you haven't seen it, but uh, we saw that um, a, it had a spare pad in there with potentially a spare reservoir uh, capacitor, because this is only solar uh, powered, and it does operate for a little bit, but eventually it will actually uh, die on you. So it does a reasonable job, but I thought maybe we could actually uh, hack it, add in some extra reservoir capacitance, and see if we can actually get that working a bit better potentially. Maybe probe some signals around. Let's take a look at it. And by the way, for those who people who suggested that this uh, pattern in here was like a carbon fiber, and this front panel might actually be carbon fiber. I don't think it is. It's just designed to look like that. I think it's just, you know, like a, in, like embossed kind of uh, plastic or whatever you call it, giving it that um, cubit um, type uh, carbon fiber look. But I doubt it's carbon fiber on a $9 retail pocket calc. So here's the inside, there's not much to it, there's a blob, there's a couple of passives around here, there's the solar cell, and there's the LCD. So what we're interested in are these passives here, and you might be able to see that there's an unpopulated capacitor there, and it looks to be in parallel with this one next to it, and that looks like it's probably the reservoir capacitor for the uh, power rail coming from the solar cells. So, so the charge on that determines how much, how long it's going to last um, when you uh, remove light from the solar cell. Now, one thing I was curious to try. I've got this uh, tritium nuclear battery here, um, which I got from uh, Nerd Rage, who uh, sent this to me. Have to uh, link in his video uh, at the end of this. I've always been meaning to do something with this, and I um, will eventually. Um, so I thought I'd try it. It's got these uh, tubes with uh, tritium in them, and they glow in the dark. It's almost pitch black here in the lab, and my camera's gained up, and you can see all the noise and crap. I just wanted to see if this was enough to actually power... Um, the unit and well unfortunately on on it ain't so uh, we're not going to get a nuclear powered battery anytime soon now i believe um this one which he made and sent to me he did actually fully characterize this and you'll have to watch his video to get the uh performance graphs the peak power out of this was i think 1.2 microwatts so obviously um yeah that's not good enough Oh, bummer. Anyway, what we're interested in is that little capacitor down there. And you can see that uh, the C107 there is in parallel. You can see the traces going across. So, like, it buggers off in there. And, of course, it's going to this, like, ground, what looks like a ground over here. Um, but we need to measure that. And then it goes into these three caps here. And... No, they, they're probably charge pump caps because they go in and out of the chip like that. These ones are three going to ground, so maybe there's some decoupling for the LCD uh, driver for the divider or something like that, uh, perhaps. But anyway, I think my theory's right. This is the reservoir cap, and we should be able to add another one in parallel. Like, I'll try and find the biggest, like, what is that, no 0805 ceramic, the biggest, or even, you know, jam a 1206 on there or something. See if I can find, like, a, I don't know, how high do they go these days, these newfangled ceramics, like 100 mic or something, probably. So, let's just buzz this out. Let's go from the negative over here, and uh, it, does it, it doesn't go all the way through. You can see it sort of, like, snaking around there. And anyway, let's just buzz it out, see if that actually goes to the negative side here. And, yep, confirmed. Oh, Gotta have sharp probes. There we go, no wackers. So that's ground. And next, let's see if there, oh, that's going in there as well. Let's see if this goes to the positive side. No, it doesn't. Okay, so there's something else in the way of that uh, solar cell. That's interesting. Hmm. So although that doesn't connect directly across the solar cell, still makes sense that that is the reservoir cap. In fact, what we can do is actually suck that out and uh, see if it still works. But let's, before we get medieval on its ass and uh, uh, start heating the bastard up, let's um, just probe some signals. So flip the solar cell. All the electrons are going to fall out. Let's just measure our uh, battery, oh, battery, our solar cell voltage. There you go, 2.75. That's all right, no wackers. And let's uh, go on the other side of this cap here. 
Let's see what we get. Oh, 2.86. I may have moved that, so 2.86. Let's not move anything. Oh, no, there we go. Yep. So it's exactly the same voltage on there. So that's pretty much uh, confirmed that that is the reservoir cap. As you'd expect, it's the biggest cap on there. It's connected through to ground. It's, it's got to be the reservoir cap. But because it doesn't actually uh, connect directly through to there, then uh, 24 ohms. There you go. There's probably some like um, internal. Sorry, let's put it the other way. Ah, yeah. Well, no, that's, there you go. There's some sort of switch in that there's probably some MOSFET switch or something in there doing that. Okay, I sucked it out. Let's measure that baby. Come on. What do we got? Yeah, a couple of mic. 16.8 mic. Yep, that's a reservoir cap if there ever was one. Oh, let's see what we've got. Well, let's see if it works without it first. Let's have a look. Does it? Should. And it does, but if we cover it up, it shouldn't last very long. Yep, there you go. So, for those playing along at home, you could actually calculate probably what value cap, like how much longer it's going to last, if that's 16.8 microfarads, and it starts fading pretty much straight away, oh, maybe, I don't know, you could kind of ballpark that, how much better. Anyway, I'll see what value caps I've got. I'll whack two of them in there. How much height we got. I don't think we've got a problem in the uh, back of our case here. Look at all the nice ridges in there. That's holding in. You can see the marks on there holding in the uh, solar cell. That pad there is holding the uh, LCD in place. Very nice. Rid um, they've got all the uh, struts in there for rigidity, whatever you want to call the damn things. And uh, we should have no, uh, yeah, yeah, we should have no shortage of room in there. It should be in that void in there, actually. She'll be right. This will do the business. Passive components for energy harvesting. It's exactly what we want. Um, and, and AVX uh, kindly sent these into the mailbag. You may remember some time back. Um, voltage is never going to be an issue in this uh, case. One mic, ten mic, two point two mic, forty seven mic. They're a uh, they're a twelve oh six. Yeah, those we can still put those on. And uh, they drop back. Yeah, they go up in voltage. They go no. Oh, oh man. Oh, we got some super caps in there. Look at that. Now, of course, if we had the room in there, you could put like a small tantalum or something like that. They're too big. They're not going to fit on the pad. Or you could bodge them in, but, you know, meh. But this could be more interesting. Look at this. The mobile sample kit. Not only have we got tantalum, but we've got niobium oxide. Niobium? That's near enough. Oxide solid electrolytic caps. Check out this bad boy. Um, a size S package. Um, it's like it's sort of like equivalent of an 0603 uh, type size. 100 mic at 6.3 volts. Now we're talking. ESR isn't going to matter. But uh, yeah, these are designed for like mobile phones and uh, stuff like that. But 100 mic again. No wackers. Look at that. Tiny little tantalums. A tantalum or ceramic in this particular case isn't going to matter. But uh, Oh, wow, 220 at 4 volts. Now we got, oh, oh, it's tempting to put those bad boys on there. We could get 440 mics on there. Oh, I think we're talking now. Yeah, uh, more capacitance. Now, here's an example where case size matters. They're both 220 microfarad, uh, right? But look at the ESR, 3,000 milliohms or 3 ohms or 150 milliohms for these ones. Um, and they're both, uh, there's not much in the voltage, you know. Yeah, these are going to be smaller because of the smaller voltage. But look at the size difference. These are D-size tantalums as opposed to these cute little S-size jobbies down there and they're both the same capacitance look at that but that's what the larger size gets you not only do, can it get you higher voltage uh, well it's it's a trade-off uh, but also gets you much lower ESR as well but in this particular application ESR doesn't matter a rat scrotum <laughs> this thing should last forever but um, the trade-off is is that it could actually um, like uh, change the startup because that, that cap will take time to start up. So you can't put like an infinite amount of capacitance in there with low ESR because it'll just suck all the energy from the uh, solar cell, effectively short it out, and it'll take too long to power on. So they, you know, it's going to be a trade-off in there. This may not start up straight away. And that is what a soldering iron burn looks like. Just 
Don't ask. All right, I only soldered one on there because it didn't quite fit. It was just easier to uh, angle one across. So let's have a look. Ta-da, it works. Okay, let's see how long it works for. Here we go, 69 factorial. That's given it a, a heck of a workout, the poor little processor. She's still going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny, which then became the Duracell Bunny <laughs> in a <laughs> stroke of reverse marketing. Um, yeah, it's it's doing much better than what we uh, what we had before. It's kicking some serious butt. Here we go. It's starting to fade now. Oh, yeah, still yeah. It it's gone. Basically lasted about two minutes, but that's a decent upgrade. And this is interesting. If I actually uh, put this on current. And short out the solar cell. We basically don't. Oh no! It it wasn't doing it before. Anyway, let's switch it back. Notice the LCD is actually uh, it's coming back there because we've got some uh, charge building back up on that cap after we shorted that puppy out. So please excuse the beeping, but let's short the cap out directly, shall we? There you go. You can short it out directly. And that, that sucker still works. That's interesting. I found an interesting mode on the EV blog meter too. If you actually apply some, <laughs> do something on there um, and get some current flowing, it actually, um, it overrides the uh, insertion alarm, the probe insertion alarm. Yeah, interesting. But basically, shorting out that cap doesn't stop the processor working. That's fascinating. Okay, so let's try this. Flip the solar cell up. We're 0.2 volts. That's obviously not going to be enough to operate it. See how quickly it turns on. Ready? See? There you go. There's your problem. It takes a second or two. What was that? Maybe two seconds to turn on? I don't know. So, yeah, you could argue that 220 microfarads might be a bit too much. The trade-off there is, you know, you've got to wait longer for it to power on, and that's going to be more annoying than any benefit you get from um, the solar cell. But really, if you're operating this thing, as you saw in the previous video, operates under 20 lux of light anyway. So, you know, I, we're just doing this for shits and giggles, really. And for those who want to know what current we're talking about, 50 microamp range here. It's charging up the cap, of course. Here we go. Don't worry about the negative. Oh, yeah. There you go. 35 microamps. Something like that. No wackers. No wonder we couldn't power it from that nuclear battery. All right, it's scope dope time. Let's have a looky here. We've got five capacitors here. I'm going to probe the bottom one here, and we expect this to be a charge pump. Ta-da! 150 hertz. You can see that in the bottom left corner there. That's the next one up. Lower amplitude as well. We're on uh, 500 millivolts uh, per division, by the way. So that's, uh, you know, that's the 2.5. So that's full scale. That's half scale. Next one up, nothing. It's got a bit of ripply on there. And yeah, a bit of ripple on it. So yeah, they're probably bypass for the LCD ladder. And that one's, oh, right up the top. So right up the top, one volt per division. There we go. So that's the height. Oh. There we go, one, two, three and a half volts. So there you go. They've got, oh, ignore the man behind the curtain there. And for those who are curious to see the LCD drive levels, well, here's one of the segments over here. There you go, operating at 31.35 hertz. And if we get one of the multiplex pins, let's try and get lucky, punk. There we go. There's a multiplex pin. The reason that was dicking around is because of our trigger level I think was right on there. There you go. There's our multi-level uh, DC bi oh, multi-level bias for our multiplexed LCD. Is that another one there? There you go. Neat. Three levels. Standard uh, multiplexed LCD driving. And for those who are wondering, uh, no I can't find um, any sort of like, um, you know, pin strap, jumper, or anything like that to enable the uh, NF model, the no fraction, which doesn't, which has the button there, but it actually doesn't have anything printed on it. So I can't actually um, I see anything, unless anyone can see anything else, and, uh, 
you know, pointed out to me. Had a look around and I can't see anything. So maybe there's some sort of programming that goes on through the pins or something at the factory. Perhaps. I don't know. But there doesn't seem to be any obvious jumper or pin strap to uh, hack the NF model into the uh, standard model. So I hope you enjoyed that little uh, follow-up on the uh, FX260 Solar there, just adding some uh, capacity um, so that the thing doesn't turn off. Beautiful. Well, it, it can last for two minutes. There's not much penalty in terms of uh, the turn-on time there, but if it bugs me, uh, I might uh, lower it to like 100 mic or uh, something like that. But that's a reasonable uh, upgrade you're going to want to do to your own calc anyway. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. But wait, there's a bonus. We're going to do a quick teardown of the Casio FX991EX, which is basically their uh, top, the class, class whiz. Um, that's basically their top of the line uh, non-programmable scientific calculator. Does graphing spreadsheets and the whole. Like, I've done actually a video in an original mailbag from a long time back, but I've actually split that out, put it over on my EEV Blog 2 channel, so I linked that in at the end of the video here. Anyway... Let's open this thing, and by the way, this is fantastic value. Um, the 260 is only like nine bucks US. This is under 20 bucks, so like basically double the price for like 10 times the capability. Um, absolutely phenomenal. So do yourself a favor and pick one up. Ta da! There you go. We're in. Ooh, a trony. <laughs> Haven't seen a trony before. <laughs> Sounds dodgy, doesn't it? Anyway, um, that's interesting. They've got metal on the back of there. Um, that's not for uh, shielding purposes. That's for, um, that'd be like a stiffening uh, back plate, I would be guessing, for that uh, LCD module. Anyway, that's going to have a uh, chip on board because we've got a tape bonding attachment here. Um, it's just a hot, hot tape bond um, on there. And so they're going to have a, a chip on board, chip on tape uh, driver up there because clearly there's not enough segments to drive all that. So that's going to be, in fact, that could be like a PCB in its own right, really. So anyway, there's our storage cap. Done a little cut out there. No whackers. Um, and well, there's not much else, is there? Once again, it's just the black blob and... That's pretty much all she wrote. But once again, um, yeah, fiberglass uh, PCB in there. No wackers. And that's and you can see actually see the membrane under there like that. There you go. But yeah, I won't take that off. But does the LCD pop out? Hang on. Actually that. It looks like the glass is embedded. Uh, the, the aluminium backing plate, yeah. Yeah, that's that's... That's factory fitted. That's the back plate for the LCD. It comes like that. Um, I do, <laughs> yeah, for uh, stiffening uh, purposes and probably adds a little bit of heft to it as well, which is, you know, probably what you want. So they might have actually, they might have specified that. Hey, you know, we've got this reasonably big calculator. You know, don't want it to slide around on the desk. You know, probably should have used rubber baby buggy bumpers on the bottom instead of these little plastic nipples. Nothing worse than a plastic nipple. Jeez, there's no fun in that at all. Um, and they went, oh, let's add, maybe add some, they specified, let's add some heft or something like that. But it could have, you know, who knows. But that's just a guess. Anyway, there you go. That's inside the FX991EX. Catch you next time.